For as long as she could remember, life had been a struggle. Stress was like eating me. It was like almost like a cancer. I felt like a loser. I felt worthless. And you live that way and you believe it. Now at age 34, Susan Fiddler was exhausted and ready to give up. I was done. And I woke up my husband and I said, Wes, I don't want to die, but I took too many pills. Susan grew up in a large family, the youngest of five children. But her parents were divorced and she always felt alone. At 17, she moved in with an older man. I had dated him not very long, maybe about a month or so. And I got pregnant with my son. And that wasn't like really his plan. It wasn't my plan to get pregnant either, but it was so not his plan. My son was born at 28 weeks. He only weighed like two pounds. They didn't think he was gonna make it. Susan's boyfriend wanted no part of the drama. He was thinking my son was gonna be like handicapped since he was born so early. So he just left us there at the hospital. I had nowhere to go. I had no one to call. Susan was homeless. For two and a half months, she lived in the hospital waiting room. One day, in desperation, she snuck into her old boyfriend's office and stole two checks from his business. And I went to the bank and I made one out for $10,000, thinking he owed me that because I had his baby and he isn't going to take care of me. Susan was arrested and thrown into jail for three days. I'm away from my son. But you know what? I slept a whole night in jail without any worry because I knew someone was watching over me and I got to eat. Susan continued to steal once her son was released from the hospital. She was afraid to apply for welfare, so they lived in her car. That is hell. I'm afraid they're going to take my baby away. And you know, I kept thinking, like, oh, maybe I don't deserve him. What kind of mother am I? I'm stealing this formula. I'm cold. I'm hungry. You know, that was my darkest days. Susan dreamed of somehow starting over. Then she met a young soldier named Wes Fiddler. They decided to get married. Superficially, I was like, oh, he's going to rescue me, kind of. Like someone to take care of me and my son. But Susan's new marriage didn't solve her problems. Her son Wayne was increasingly anxious and exhibiting bizarre behavior at school. He started hurting himself. He was banging his head on the school bus. I don't want to leave mommy. I don't want to leave mommy. Wayne was taken out of school and put on a cocktail of psychiatric drugs. I lost it thinking, what did I do wrong? Is it because like the life I led, am I being punished? Soon after, Wes was sent to war. Susan felt abandoned, unable to handle her son's illness alone. She convinced her doctor to give her medication. He kept writing me prescription after prescription, and I see myself deteriorating. My husband called from Afghanistan. He's worried sick. What is going on? I knew it wasn't right, but I knew I was thousands of miles away, and I couldn't do nothing about it. But at the time, I'm like, I'm not a drug addict. My doctor gave him to me. But I knew I was doing wrong. Around this time, Susan made a new friend in her apartment building. She start talking about Jesus. And I'd be a little high, you know. And I'd be like, you know, can you just be quiet? I don't want to hear it. Because if there was a God, my life wouldn't have been so bad. Wes finally returned home, and Susan tried to cut back on the drugs. But one night, in deep despair, she overdosed on pills. I couldn't live no more. I love my son. But at the time I was coming off them drugs, I felt like I was only making his life worse. I took him, but I knew after I took him that I didn't want to die. A few days later, Susan's neighbor came to her house. She's like, you're always doing it your way. You're always doing it your way. Try Jesus' way. And I was like, what do I have to lose? What do I have to lose? I, I'm tired. I've had enough. And she asked me, would you accept Jesus in your heart? And I, I just got on my knees crying. 
she prayed with me, just kept praying and praying. I accepted Jesus that day. And you know, I have to tell you, that is the first day of my life. Susan began attending church and reading her Bible. What she learned changed the way she viewed herself. With Christ, I am new. I am something. He loves me. He has died for my sins. He's died for everybody's sins. It also changed the way she related to others. I'm not afraid. I can deal with anything. I have strength. I have courage. I have love. I have love for people I really disliked. You don't have to change to love Jesus, but when you do love Jesus and He is in your heart, He changes you. He changes your desires. He changes your, like, your loneliness. Her son Wayne's life changed dramatically as well. He's off every medicine. Me and my son got baptized on the same day. The Lord made me new. I sleep at night now. I'm, I'm crying now, but you know what? I am so grateful for my new life. You are never bad enough that Jesus cannot accept your sin.